Next show is a dialogue between the host and the listeners about their relationships. This show is not an attempt to assess, diagnose, or treat any mental health or illness condition. Please consult your physician, psychiatrist, or psychotherapist for personal matters. Inner Voice, a heartfelt chat with Dr. Fujian. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Inner Voice show. I'm Dr. Fujian Zhang and have Sean in studio. This is a show about what matters most in life. Our mind, our thoughts, our behaviors, our actions, our relationships, and how we could create a fulfilling life for ourselves and everyone around us and take this journey of beautiful life in a way that we can make a difference in each other's lives. In this show, I'll bring you the latest research and statistics about homelessness in the United States. And then I have a chance to speak with a entrepreneur, designer, and someone who has created her life mission about creating literacy around the world, Sarah Kazimi. And then I will talk to James Sadik, who is also, was his mission in the world, although he's an attorney, with Sarah Kazimi and anyone around the world to literally, literally create literacy in the world and support the world to be a better place, all of us together. So join us, don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Dr. Fujian Zane is a psychotherapist, a marriage and family therapist, and a life coach with more than 27 years of experience. She is the author of the Awareness Integration Model, which has been researched and published in numerous international journals. Dr. Fujian has offices in Beverly Hills, Irvine, and Woodland Hills, California, and also consults online and by telephone. Make an appointment with her today by calling 818-648-2140 or go online to www.fujan.com. That's www.fojan.com. Join the conversation every Monday afternoon at 3 p.m. Pacific for Inner Voice Heartfelt Chat with Dr. Fushan. Dr. Fushan has a direct approach to getting you to free your mind. Inner Voice is a live call-in show where you can chat about your life and all that matters to you in your relationships. Inner Voice Heartfelt Chat with Dr. Fushan, Monday afternoons at 3 p.m. Pacific on Smart Talk, KMAT, 1490 a.m. and on the Internet stream. Okay, welcome back to Inner Voice Show. A new report released Monday shows that about one in 30 American children was homeless at some point last year. That's about 2.5 million kids, an 8% increase to an historic high, according to the study from the National Center on Family Homelessness, just over half are younger than six years old. Youth aged 12 to 17 are more at risk of homelessness than adults. Now, 75% of runaways are actually female. Estimates of the number of pregnant homeless girls are between six and 22%. Between 20 and 40% of homeless youth identify as gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, or questioning. Now, children who lack a stable home are vulnerable to a number of adverse outcomes. Now, some threats, such as poverty and hunger, uh, may precede episodes of homelessness. Others stem directly from living without a home. Homeless children are more likely than other children to have moderate or severe acute and chronic health problems and less access to medical and dental care. Now, symptoms of asthma, hyperactivity, inattention, and behavior problem are more prevalent among this group. 
Now, children without stable homes are more than twice as likely as others to repeat the school grade, be expelled or suspended, or drop out of high school. A quarter or more of the homeless children have witnessed violence, and more than half have problems with anxiety and depression. Now, family homelessness may result in children's separation from their parents, either because children are formally placed in foster care or because parents just leave the children with the care of some relative or friends. According to the Department of Justice, the link between academic failure and delinquency, violence and crime is welding to reading failure. Statistics back this up. They say 85% of all juveniles who interface with the juvenile court system are functionally illiterate. And over 70% of inmates in America's prison cannot read beyond fourth grade level. Now, according to UNICEF, nearly 1 billion people, 1 billion people will exit the, tw uh, exit the 21st century unable to read a book or sign their names, and two-thirds of them will be women. Now, many of the United States ills are directly related to illiteracy. Here are just a few statistics for you. Literacy is learned, literacy is passed along by parents who cannot read or write. One child in four grows up not knowing how to read. Now, 43% of adults at level one literacy skills live in poverty, compared to only 4% of those level four. Now, three out of four food stamp recipients perform in the lowest two literacy levels. 90% of the welfare recipients are high school dropouts, 16 to 19 year old girls at the poverty level and below with below average reading skills are six times more likely to have out of wedlock children who in turn will have below average reading skills or none at all. Now, this is the cost to the US, an excess of $230 billion a year in healthcare costs is linked to low adult literacy. Nearly half of American adults have difficulty understanding and using health information and lack of understanding impedes adults' abilities to make appropriate health decisions and increase the likelihood that they'll incur higher health costs. Now, low literacy costs the, in the U.S. at least $225 million, billion, billion dollars each year in non-productivity in the workforce, crime, and loss of tax revenues due to unemployment. About 50% of the 2 million immigrants that come to the U.S. each year lack high school education and proficient English language skills. This severely limits their access to jobs, college, and citizenship, and increases their vulnerability to living in poverty. 75% of state prison inmates did not complete high school or cannot be classified as low literate. 95% uh, of those incarcerated are reintegrated into the community. Now, research shows the, the inmates who are educated are 43% less likely to return to prison. Why am I bringing you all of these research? Not to make you feel bad, or maybe actually I do want you to feel bad. All of us, all of us to take this seriously, to feel the pain that is around us, to take it seriously and maybe act somehow in a way, whether each one of us does it in a particular way or we come together and do it, that's why I wanted us to talk about this and then come back with our guests who are actually doing something about this. We'll be right back with Sarah Kazimi and James Sadik at the end of the show. Don't go anywhere and we love to talk to you. So you can call us at any time during the show at 951-922-922. Three five three two. Take good care. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Were you recently injured in a car accident? Then you need the law offices of Aria Fatakar for your free case evaluation. Don't let the medical bills pile up and don't let the insurance companies try to settle your claim for a few hundred dollars. Call 714 714- 
464-3246. The law offices of Aria Fatakar serves all of California. If they don't win, you don't pay. So call now, 714-464-3246. This is a paid-for attorney advertisement by the law offices of Aria Fatakar of Orange, California. Have you ever wished you could just wake up one day, reach across your nightstand, and hit the life reset button? Let's face it, the struggles and frustrations of everyday life leave millions of women and men around the globe yearning for a new way. And the new way is right here in Life Reset, the awareness integration path to create the life you want by Dr. Fujan Zane. You can get it now at fujan.com or amazon.com. Life Reset, the awareness integration path to create the life you want. You deserve it. Welcome back to Inner Voice Show. I'm Dr. Fujian Zay, and I'm excited to have a good friend, Sarah Kazimi, uh, who's a designer, entrepreneur, and a believer in unity, art, and expression. And this philosophy has resonated in all of her work and personal life. As a founder of Leo Bella Inc. and the World Orphanage Foundation, she has been able to fulfill this dream and empower others with the same. Her mission described in one word would be empowerment. She heads to conflicting regions and built charter schools. And this is what sparked her to create the World Orphanage Foundation, which targets children of multi-ethnic, multi-socioeconomic backgrounds and gift them with the pathway toward higher education, accelerated learning, and opportunities to progress as one human race. Most of the countries that she's been able to fund charity work has been Israel, Africa, Afghanistan, Zambia, India, definitely USA, and over a dozen um, other nonprofit organizations for that work with a lot of different countries. Thank you, Sarah, for being with us. It's a joy to have you. Thank you, Fujanjit, for having me here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for our inner voice and everyone who is watching or listening to this amazing program. So for all of you who are listening, uh, Sarah is an uh, Iranian, Persian, Afghan, American. So when she says June, it just means dear. For all of you who don't know any Persian, she, when she calls me June, it means dear. So we're going to keep calling each other June, and then we'll call all of you who are listening to us and watching us June. That just, just means dear. So Sarah, um, I know some of your work, and then um, I know that you have gone through immigration. You have, uh, have uh, uh, different parents, and then you lived in Afghanistan until you were three. Then you came to the United States. And you've gone through your own hardships in uh, your life and um, have two beautiful children and decided not only to make yourself as a woman and a single mother uh, a successful person, and then you decided to give the skills, give the gift of your love and uh, your skills and in any way that you can uh, to the children of the world. So tell us a little bit about your own story and what got you to do this. Thank you. Uh, yes, World Orphanage Foundation, uh, I found it back in 2011 and it was a passion that uh, somehow I, I got driven by it. I went to Afghanistan, I took a trip uh, to give back and uh, I was in one of the villages. Uh, a young girl uh, came up to me and called me saying that uh, I need to speak to you. And uh, I uh, went into the uh, uh, her home and she said, uh, Sarah, I have a feeling you are a great power to the universe, but I have to share that I was raped by a group of villagers and at that point she was nine years old uh so it, it hurt me in so many areas of life emotional mental and just seeing a nine-year-old 
in Afghanistan being raped, it comes from lack of information, education, and humanity. Uh, that's what actually started. Uh, that's what started this whole thing internally. That why do we have to suffer? Uh, because a lot of the chaos that happens around the world, uh, something like 9-11 that happened, it does not come from higher education or information or uh, living in, uh, in a higher class. It comes from lack of education and it comes from poverty and it comes from lack of financial uh, stability. So uh, at that point, uh, around uh, December of 2011, my first trip to Afghanistan, coming back uh, from that trip, uh, I found my purpose, that my purpose being here, other than my design, uh, is to contribute to humanity, not only to Afghanistan, but to countries around the world that they cannot unite. Uh, whether you're from Afghanistan or Israel, Palestine, Africa, India. So that's what gave me the empowerment that the only way I can be a voice to every woman and children or little boy out there is by action. It's easy to speak. It's easy to say, I'm going to help. But uh, in order for me to show the unity, I helped and I helped organizations in Israel. I helped Afghanistan. I went to India myself and I fed the kids and I spent day of giving the information that I have and empowering them that not to give up because when we go through pov poverty, a lot of the elites and uh, Nelson Mandela, he comes from poverty, so he did not have to become uh, go through go through being a suicide bomber or living a poverty. It was the internal willpower or someone like Steve Jobs. Uh, so all of that's where all the uh, courage and all the my purpose. That's where it all started. I really sense that. And uh, you're a designer. First, you started uh, in Los Angeles, your own design. You're someone who designs uh, not only beautiful purses, which also have this type of an ethnic and worldly uh, designs on them. Uh, you put the um, flags of different countries. We have U.S., we have um, uh, Israel, we have Japan, we have China, you have all of them. Uh, with uh, these beautiful Swarovski uh, jewels on them where uh, they're special design. And then you also have uh, different types of jewelry which are designed also to create that beautiful peace and uh, melody around the world and people can find those. And then uh, the proceedings of your profits also go to uh, this nonprofit organization, which is the World uh, Orphanage Foundation. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what brings you to create these pieces and bring them together in the world? Indeed. So um, as most of the lis listeners, if you go to worldorphanage.org, you'll see the logo as flag of countries that they cannot unite with one another and a whole lot other. Um, and in the middle of it, there's a tree, tree of life, that it unites, of, unites all of us together because I believe we are all branch of one another. It comes down to humanity. I took that concept and I put it into a design, um, which the company is called Leo Bella. Uh, every single flag around the world. Up to today, we have about 500, I do apologize, 342 flags uh, in purses. One side is the flag, the other side is the outline of the country. Um, that these bags are created with Swarovski crystal and each bag is certified. Um, only 77 of these bags are available worldwide. So they're collectibles and the next editions are going to be with uh, precious stones, diamonds, gold, emeralds, uh, and so on. And a percentage of anything I design and create, uh, just like I said earlier, in order for me to show my listeners or the viewers 
that I what I don't know how else to explain or show the world. What I mean is by creating my designs, what comes from internal, I put it into a pattern of uh, whether it's a fabric or a jewelry uh, for gentlemen's brooches, uh, cufflinks or money clip, and for women, uh, an evening uh, clutch. So a per uh, percentage of any cell that I have, it goes to World Orphanage Foundation or the viewers or the listeners, they can select an organization of their choice and say, you know what, since we are giving back and we are, it's a jewelry with cause, it's fashion with cause, it's just not a creation. It helps higher education. It helps someone in need. And so, that's beautiful what you're doing. You're saying that obviously uh, World Orphanage has a purpose and it, the, its purpose is uh, literacy and creating charter schools around the world and helping different organizations. However, if someone purchases any of uh, the items, you still are promising for a percentage to go to any type of a nonprofit organization of their choice because your organization and who you are is about giving back and not giving back only your way, but giving back to people however people want to create that and you would be a hand in the middle which would create all of this. Indeed, and um, simultaneously as building Leo Bella, I do a lot of private labels. So I manufacture and build other brands or build other organization for um, individuals, but my only request is that you must give back. If I'm going to design for you as a private label, if I'm going to manufacture a tunic, a jewelry line, anything that you desire for me to build your brand, you must give back. And if uh, the if my client, they refuse to give back, I would not be able to work with that organization. So over the past couple of years, I've been able to work with a very dear client of mine from Germany, uh, Swift Alarm, and it's an anti-rape device mm -hmm. that uh, I've been working with Mr. Rudolf King, uh, amazing gentleman, and he seen the work that I've done with World Orphanage Foundation, and he'd been one of the contributors. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the company. The second one is L'Expression. Um, it's a pencil uh, bracelet and it's gold and diamond. So from building the brand and the line uh, with the, the organization, um, they have given back. Uh, so anything that I do in matter of consulting my um, employer or the organization that I work with, they are aware that a percentage of uh, the proceed of my service must go through World Orphanage Foundation or an organization of their choice. It seems like in this way, you are also gathering a group of generous people who really want to um, make a difference in the world and bringing them together and creating the venue for people to make that difference. I know that a lot of people do want to make a difference. They get um, heartache from watching the news and many of the statistics and things that just go along the world and may feel powerless in what can I do? I may not be able to change the world at large, but what is it that I can do in a system where um, I could choose to make a difference? Whether that system is somewhere in my neighborhood or someone is a bigger organization that I can be with and give, uh, whether I give it into, you know, as a volunteer or whether I give it financially or my ideas or be a part of the board or influence in any format that I can. And it seems like for you, you're bringing all these uh, generous people. And even if they're not realizing it by conversing about it, that if we're having a business and there's financial gain in this business, which that's what businesses are for, supposed to have financial gain, that we should be mindful that we can influence the world also another way, which you bring the conversation onto the table. And uh, from there, they can choose whether they like to do it through the World Orphanage or any other contribution and any format venue that they want to do. So this is the beauty that you're bringing to the business world, the consciousness of 
We're going to be busy. We're going to make money. We're going to create amazing businesses and create jobs for people. But in another way, we're also going to give it forward and we're going to create this expansion of consciousness that we need to make a difference for each other. Yes, you're exactly correct. Yes. Um, it's something that I believe we all should one way or the other way give. So, uh, I've been able to create a platform in past couple of years through World Orphanage that how can I unite other organization and individuals who want to participate. Uh, the very first thing that I've concentrated over the past couple of years was uh, building jobs. Start with Afghanistan. If we can build, if we can create something in Afghanistan and in India and in Israel, uh, then we can use that same platform, that same blueprint. Uh, when you start up a company, you have to have a blueprint, a business plan. So I started with Afghanistan because it's uh, one of the most difficult countries to oh, yeah. uh, to uh, to help uh, people. So. Uh, yeah, the infrastructure is not there, so you have to really create infrastructure beyond a lot of resistance that are there, especially for a woman who goes in from another country and tries to uh, be, you know, a single mom and try, try to create an infrastructure. That's pretty hard. My hat's off to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, to create an infrastructure in Afghanistan, it requires... Uh, more than just communication it requires me to be there and uh, explain how i want to do it so luckily i was able to create an agriculture movement in afghanistan uh, having a farm i asked the government to please donate land to world orphanage foundation for me to create jobs for me to whether build school uh, to create a sustainable living the government's been very helpful in so many areas. They've came forward uh, knowing that I lived most of my life abroad. I'm an Afghan Persian American uh, with a new philosophy. They provided me the tools. And over the past couple of years, I've been able to create an agriculture movement through Saffron, uh, cultivating Saffron and its women run organization. So since 2011 to 2018, I still do go back and I provide them months of supply of flour, sugar, bread, whatever I possibly can, but I can only do that for so long because I'm just giving them a fish for a very short period of time. Um, um, I want uh, the listeners and the audience to know that saffron is a herb. It's a herb that uh, actually has been proven to create happiness. It makes you giggle and creates happiness and joy for you. So I'm much uh, more at ease and I really appreciate and love it that you are cultivating saffron you know, instead of opiates, although they both kind of create happiness for some people, but at least this one is healthy and you don't get addicted to it. And um, thank you for doing that. Of course, of course. Um, I just did not want it, uh, people around the world, contributors, to uh, look at World Orphanage Foundation as an organization saying, give me. Uh, so with every donation, when uh, viewers or listeners go to World Orphanage, the donation, there is a button when you donate, you get saffron for your donation. So this way, that donation goes right back to creating jobs in Afghanistan and around the world. So if the platform or in Afghanistan, if we can use that platform in a country that does not have any infrastructure, we can go ahead and take that cookie cutter, that the blueprint and implemented in Israel, in India, in different part of the world. And viewers and listeners, they can come forward and take over an organization, be a director, be a board member, be an advisor of World Orphanage Foundation in their country. If they want to help Israel, if they want to help any country, Armenia, every single flag around the world they can come forward and become part of this organization and help their country use that same platform, that same blueprint, 
and we can help uh, child family around the world. So coming back to the U.S., you also have uh, the child, the world of orphanage uh, here in Los Angeles, and uh, you are planning to create a charter school in Los Angeles. Uh, and talk a little bit about that. And I know we have an event coming uh, in, in November 11th, 11, 11, 11, 2018, uh, which is going to be actually about the world orphanage uh and, and the schools and the charter schools that uh, they're also creating in the United States. Yes. Uh, in the United States, uh, I we are planning between the board of directors, board of advisors, and everyone who is uh, part of World Orphanage Foundation to build a charter school here in U.S. In past uh, few weeks, I've been able to speak to uh, the many of the city advisors to see any of the schools that have closed down and there are no funding, the land is sitting there, the school is closed. Uh, if I'm able to create uh, some type of a higher education or information center with the schools, because the exact same thing that's happening in Afghanistan, uh, lack of education and information that poverty exists in United States. Yes. And on uh, Los tonight, Angeles, is the highest amount of now um, homeless children, and it's just growing in rapid numbers. And as we talked at the yes. beginning, homeless children or children in poverty are not going to have a great education, unfortunately. No, unfortunately not. Over the past uh, several years, uh, my kids and I, every New Year's Eve, we feed about 500 to 700. Last year was almost 1,000 homeless people and midnight mission that we provide food. And I have my kids to just help me. And when they started, they started, they were about five or six years old and now they are 13 and uh, 11. So the poverty exists in the US. Uh, how I'm trying to generate funds now in US is to create an agriculture movement, same thing in US. Uh, one of the schools that I went and I looked, uh, it was about uh, I believe 50,000 square feet lot with many classrooms open. So uh, I've been speaking and uh, to few members and advisors and city council that would I be able to put solar and we create an agriculture movement through solar. When we have rain, we can use the solar and uh, this way we are educating our homeless and our community that you have a job in this school that you can come and start cultivating and different vegetables, different food and fruits. Uh, they thought it's a very good idea for us to start uh, generating funds towards the charter school and the projects that I take over or I like for all of us to unite with build, it takes years. It does not happen overnight. So a lot of uh, viewers or friends, they ask me, oh, you've been working on the project since 2011 and we're in 2018, but it requires a lot of uh, creating infrastructure and recreating it because you're dealing with governments of different country around the world. Um, however, we've been able to help a dozen of organizations and country since 2011 to now. I'm also sensing that you're not uh, kind of recreating the wheel from, um, you know, the get go. You're looking at the resources that are already out there. You're looking at the structures that are already out there and seeing how you can bring these resources and structures together, such as bringing government resources, such as the city or new laws that are there and some things that are not working such as school systems that are no longer working or the buildings are there and just sitting there for no reason they're not doing anything so it's more like bringing all the resources that are there and connecting them together consistently to bring a more of a sustainable system as you actually 
bring this source together. So it's not just creating some, something, it's creating it so that it works and it's sustainable. And I like what you said, which is you try, uh, you try a system and see if it works. If it works, then you create it as a cookie cu cutter uh, kind of an approach and then duplicate that. But duplicating it again, we have to look at the cultural aspect and the systems that are already existing to be able to bring that. And that's what you're doing. Um, thank you, Sarah. Hang in there because we're going to add to our guest. Um, James Sadik is going to be with us. Um, so we're going to actually go and listen to um, some uh, other people who are generating work and are creating beautiful resources for all of us. And then we'll be right back with both Sarah Kazimi and James Sadik. Were you recently injured in a car accident? Then you need the law offices of REF Data Car for your free case evaluation. Don't let the medical bills pile up and don't let the insurance companies try to settle your claim for a few hundred dollars. Call 714-464-3246. The law offices of REF Data Car serves all of California. If they don't win, you don't pay. So call now, 714-464-3246. This is a paid for attorney advertisement by the law offices of Aria Thatikar of Orange, California. Join the conversation every Monday afternoon at 3 p.m. Pacific for Inner Voice Heartfelt Chat with Dr. Fushan. Dr. Fushan has a direct approach to getting you to free your mind. Inner Voice is a live call-in show where you can chat about your life and all that matters to you in your relationships. Inner Voice Heartfelt Chat with Dr. Fushan, Monday afternoons at 3 p.m. Pacific on Smart Talk, KMAT, 1490 a.m. and on the Internet stream. Have you ever wished you could just wake up one day, reach across your nightstand, and hit the life reset button? Let's face it, the struggles and frustrations of everyday life leave millions of women and men around the globe yearning for a new way. And the new way is right here in Life Reset, the awareness integration path to create the life you want by Dr. Fujan Zain. You can get it now at fujan.com or amazon.com. Life Reset, the awareness integration path to create the life you want. You deserve it. Dr. Fujian Zain is a psychotherapist, a marriage and family therapist, and a life coach with more than 27 years of experience. She is the author of the Awareness Integration Model, which has been researched and published in numerous international journals. Dr. Fujian has offices in Beverly Hills, Irvine, and Woodland Hills, California, and also consults online and by telephone. Make an appointment with her today by calling 818-648-2140 or go online to www.fujan.com. That's www.fojan.com. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Fujan Zain. We've been talking with Sarah Kazimi, and I am so excited now to have James Sadik with us on the phone. Um, he's been a Los Angeles personal injury attorney since 1989. I know because he's been my great friend since then. I even remember the day he was taking the bar and passing it. So now you know how long I've known him. Along the way, he has also developed several other fields of exper expertise. In 1992, he established his own practice in Century City, specializing in personal injury, business litigation, and wrongful term termination, which he ran until 1998. Now, from then till 2010, James was half of the partnership of Mogadami and Sadik in Los Angeles and Glendale, and they specialized in personal injury, insurance defense, uh, wrongful termination, and labor disputes and business litigation. 
In 2010, James decided he just doesn't want it to that be in the partnership anymore because he got too large and he wanted to devote himself to more of a personal service and attention to his clients. And that he does. I can vouch for that. He not only has been my friends, he's been my attorney and he's won every case for me, I'm telling you. So he formed a new James Sadik private practice in Beverly Hills and specializes in personal injury, medical malpractice and wrongful termination. Currently, James... Um, his focus is dealing mostly with personal injury insurance claims and wrongful termination. Um, he is licensed to practice law in every court in California. Every court, everyone, every court in California. And he's a member of the U.S. Tax Court and is a licensed to practice in the United States Courts of Appeal for, armed, for the Armed Forces. James has served as the attorney for the plaintiff as well as the defense, and he has extensive experience in arbitration and mediation and has even served as a judge pro tem. James Addict's diverse legal experience and his humanity makes him a formidable ally for anyone in need of legal assistance. Hi, James. Hello, Fujian. Good to hear from you, and thank you for the introduction. Of course, we also have Sarah with us, and I know that she's a good friend of yours, and you also are a, a board member in her World um, Orphanage Foundation. I am honored to be the more board member on the World Orphanage, and Sarah is a very good friend and very hardworking lady. Yes, she Thank is. Thank you, James. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So, James, tell us about you and how you are also not only uh, working very hard as, you know, an, as an attorney to take care of your clients and take a stand for them. But beside that, you are also uh, taking care of the world in a whole different way, taking, uh, putting yourself into spaces where your legal expertise and wisdom uh, shows up in where we can generate uh, this type of uh, giving, giving back, giving forward, giving to the community at large. Well, thank you for the opportunity. When I first came to this country, I had $3,400 in my pocket and no other financial help. And this country gave me the opportunity to become who I am today. So I always had it in the back of my mind that I have to give back to the people the people of this country and the people of the world who made it uh, available for me. In that role, opportunities, different opportunities came to life. Here and there, I started doing some pro bono work, helping some people who were victims of the domestic violence, for example. We had a couple of ladies who were beaten up by their husbands, and they were thrown into the street, and they had no background in education or work or financial help to um, support themselves or seek uh, any kind of uh, legal uh, help from a lawyer who would do the work for them. And even though I do not do family law, I felt bad and I tried to bring some people along and do the work as much as I could to help these people to get back on their feet and uh, um, have a life and don't uh, stay as a victim in a situation that they're supposed to be. One of the most interesting things was a few years ago when I was sitting in my office and a young woman came to my office. She used to be a, a, a military police, a veteran, who had just came back from her service in Afghanistan after a year and a half. She was served with a lawsuit because she was involved in an accident before she was deployed in Afghanistan, and nobody was going to defend her, and she had no means to hire an attorney. And her insurance company, for a variety of reasons, was not supporting her. I felt so bad thinking that, look at these people. They go put their lives for us, and yeah. nobody is there to help them when they come back, which yeah. I agreed to represent her pro bono. And I'm glad to say that we were successful not only to totally defend her by actually getting some damages for, for her because accident actually wasn't her fault. And uh, mm -hmm. with that, it came to my mind that I can do something bigger. So I, right. the first thing I did, I said, all of the military and their families, if they come to me for any services, I will do as much pro bono work, and if I have to do a services, I do it at a discount. It's on my website, jameskfaddick.com. Everybody can see it. And 
It has been uh, many occasions since that the military and their family had come to me, and I was so happy I was able to help them uh, with any of the services they have, that uh, they require. And now with World Orphanage, when I met Sarah, I realized something else. Her organization is a bit different than most others. Instead of giving the fish to people, she's teaching them to fish, to be on their feet, to support themselves. And that's something that really resonates to me, and I decided that I will do anything that I can support this organization and help. And one of the first things is that whatever case I get that uh, comes from this organization, I will contribute the fees, the portion of the fees, to the organization. I thank you so much for doing that, James. I know that I've been uh, working with a lot of the uh, men and women from the military who did come back from Afghanistan, from Iraq. And you're absolutely right. They, uh, they go there protecting all of us, not only us in the United States, but us around the world. And they come back, and many of them don't have all they need. I know they come back with a lot of trauma, which I've worked with them through their, uh, through their trauma. And uh, many of the services and coming back and actually living in an environment of being away for many years and reintegrating in the environment, they need a lot of our support as much as they can to integrate themselves in uh, wherever that they come back to live at because they get separated from their family systems, from everything. And they are in high alert for so long that uh, any help such as yours uh, it, it really supports them. So thank you for doing that. And um, there's a way, uh, I've always said, I, I remember doing a lot of the seminars and, and uh, lectures for people who are immigrant. And they always say, you know, uh, how can we end prejudice? And how can we stop, uh, you know, when we talk, they talk about immigrants or we're from such and such a country, that people don't give us that way of look or thinking or uh, kind of a negative thought. And when I listen to both of you, both Sarah and James, both of you, this part of me, you know, gets really, I feel warm about this is what we are. This is who we who we can be. Just being the best for everyone. And and as you said, you know, we're in a country that we love, and it's given us all this opportunity. We all come from countries that we're all still, uh, you know, in love with them, and they're our homeland. And the you know presenting ourselves in a way that just not only in a high standing, high integrity, but also to give and uh, to create a beautiful land for all of us as we live. So it, it's a beautiful feeling to be among colleagues, among peers, among uh, people who uh, they take their life seriously and they take life seriously in a way that every single human matters. And if they're, you know, if I could rise to a, a space where I can give, then it's my duty, it's my responsibility to give. And this is exactly what I hear both of you are doing. So Sarah, can you also talk a little bit about uh, your experience with, um, you know, how uh, James Sadig or someone who in that caliber can support. So if any of us, uh, any listeners who are out there to know how is it that they can support you, the cause, um, and uh, the World Orphanage, whether it's a system that it's around the world and we could do that, or it's a system for someone who says, no, I prefer just to support uh, Americans and who they are in, in America. How can they be a part of the support? Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, James Sadiq for being part of this organization, being an advisor. And over the past uh, he have contributed so much of his time, uh, not only to the organization, sitting on the board, uh, being on conference call in between Afghanistan, taking the time to meet with the uh, consul of Afghanistan here in Beverly Hills and investing all of that time. It truly means a lot to me and it shows with action that he means unity. It's irrelevant that uh, I am Afghan 
and he's Persian and what his culture belief system it is, he have contributed so much of his time uh, to the organization, investing time, writing emails, helping to restructure a lot of things, whether it's in Afghanistan or here, uh, that means a lot. So to me, it's one's action that speaks louder. Uh, another thing is it all comes down to unity. Uh, helping, why help this organization? Because this organization is not only in Afghanistan, it's in US, it's a 501c3 approved by the state and by the Senate. Uh, it have helped many of the Americans here since 2011 till right now. Uh, over, I can easily say, thousand of people in United States. Homeless people, my two kids and I, 500 to 700, that's just us uh, giving back every uh, Christmas, but we also have united with many other organizations so that we can go ahead and assist them to become more sustainable. Uh, with James Sadiq, he also helped me personally with one of the cases that I had. My daughter and I, we were sitting behind a red light and someone uh, came and hit me from the back. It was a hit and run. Uh, he basically took over. He said, you know what, Sarah, let me just go ahead and help you to resolve this issue. And uh, it, it's a lot of trauma that you and your daughter went through. And uh, a lot of us who are moms or dad, we don't understand what when we get into a car accident and we have a young child next to us, there's a lot of trauma involved. So, uh, the, the trauma is something that my daughter still behind the light sits and she's still after uh, so many months tells me it's like mom do you remember if we had a hit and run mm -hmm. uh, so it, there's a lot of psychological there's uh, a lot of uh, emotional support that's needed and uh, James have been there for us as my, for my family and myself and the organization I'm very grateful great thank you uh, James the we got about uh, one minute more left, so I want to hear from you in what is it that if you have a message for our audience and listeners to hear from you, what would that be? Well, have faith in your society, have faith in yourself, have faith in humanity, and whenever you give, it will come back a lot more in a different way in your life, and the fulfillment that you get from that is uh, not comparable to anything else in life. Absolutely. Uh, it's very, very important for people to understand that. And that's yeah. one of the reasons that I want to help this organization. Wonderful. Thank you for being in my, in my show and sharing uh, yourself with uh, all that are listening. Uh, now, if you wanted to uh, converse with James, you can go to James K. Sadik. Uh, and I will put that also on the uh, podcast and, and the YouTube channel, so you can also see that, James K. Sadig, S-A-D-I-G-H, uh, dot com. And if you want to connect with Sarah Kazimi, you can definitely go to sarahkazimi.com. You can go to leobella.net or worldorphanagefoundation.com. It has been a pleasure to have the two of you with us. And I hope for all of you who are listening, thank you for listening with your heart. And I hope that with all that you heard, that your heart is open to give with joy all of who you are, all of your resources and your wisdom. Thank you for being with us. Until next week, take good care of yourself and create an amazing life for yourself and everyone around you. Thank you. The Inner Voice Show is a dialogue between the host and the listeners about their relationships. This show is not an attempt to assess, diagnose, or treat any mental health or illness condition. Please consult your physician, psychiatrist, or psychotherapist for personal matters. This is 1490 AM KMET, Banning, Beaumont, Redlands, and Palm Springs. News, talk, sports. From the AP.